What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Rideshare Hub. I'm gonna focus on the shirt real quick. Oh, there we go. <laughs> My name is Greg. Uh, been a while, a lot has changed. So I do have like an update video on that. There's a lot going on with my car right now. Very interesting stuff. Um, so check that out so that I don't have to delve into it in this video uh, and give you guys an explanation. But um, yeah, so I'm borrowing my friend's car. They have a red Kia Soul and um, there is a car seat in the back, not my children. But um, side note, the Kia Soul is actually a pretty decent ride sharing car. Minus that tiny little trunk that doesn't fit anything, it's legit. I uh, drove one for Lyft Express and I, I honestly loved it. It was a very comfortable car. <laughs> It's kind of floored. I was like, I was like, I feel like this goes against my man code. Like I shouldn't like this car that much. Um, but I did. I really liked it. Honestly, I missed it for a while. Um, so what I'm doing today is I'm going to go over with you guys all the ways you can legitimately make $50 an hour doing this. Now I have actually, this isn't like a video where this happened to me once. This is something I've practiced for a long time and gotten good at. There's like only a few methods that legitimately work that you can legitimately do this. Um, I'm, I'm sorry to disappoint anyone who really thinks you can make 50 an hour at all times. You can't, but there are times where you really can. And if you're really strategic about it, you can make a ton of money doing this if you're just utilizing the right times. So all you really need is the flexibility. If you've got the flexibility, I will show you guys how it's done. So the first way I did it was utilizing destination trips and consecutive trips at the same time. Consecutive trip bonuses from Uber. I will say none of these methods will work with Lyft because ever since Lyft went public, they're trash. Um, let's just call a spade a spade. There's like hardly ever bonuses that are worthwhile. The guarantees don't count. Those aren't worthwhile. The guarantees that Lyft offers usually suck. Um, I'm sorry if any of you are like real religious to Lyft, but I, good Lord, they can infuriate me. And I will say maybe depending on your market, it's better, but everywhere I've been, Lyft usually sucks and they still suck because they don't really do bonuses. So with Uber, the great thing is if it's the right consecutive trip bonus, I've done this on weekdays and weekends where I've made $50 in an hour. Um, and it's usually at, at the very least 35, sometimes 40, but a lot of times 50 and the most I've done 65 doing this. So what, what you got to pay attention to is you've got to look for a time where there's a really good consecutive trip bonus. I always say anything $8 or more is worth your while because Break it down to what are you getting tipped for those three rides? Um, I would, probably 10 would be an even safer bet because if you get a $10 consecutive trip bonus, it's like you're getting a three and a half dollar tip on each ride. A little bit less technically, but about that margin. But it's best when you get like 13, 14, 50, those ones you absolutely want to do this. So now you got to learn a few things about consecutive trips. First thing I've learned is that that third ride is very difficult to get. And I don't know if that's part of their algorithm or whatever, but like I have had way too many times where I got those first two trips so fast and that third one I couldn't get for the life of me. Sometimes it would take over an hour. And by that point, getting the bonus didn't even make it worth it. It just made it what it would have been anyways. So... I just learned you've got to play around with it a little bit. So here's what I started doing. So I get the first ride in the consecutive trip zone, right? Uh, in whatever area it is, uh, it's usually a pretty large area. And to get that first ride, what I never do is I never go to the cliche areas. I stay on the very tip, the very fringe of it. Uh, it doesn't matter what direction, but I say as far out from um, like the, the middle of it, um, as I can. Here's why. Because what every driver does is they see that bonus and they're like, oh, I'm going to go in and go to the downtown area and bust out three rides. Well, then there's hundreds of drivers there and no one gets three rides. So you go to like a random neighborhood where you're going to get someone going to work, whatever it is, you get that first ride. Now the key is you want, there is a little bit of a sweet point, but a, a sweet spot, but you can still make it work. Usually what you want 
is you want that first ride to be about 20 or 30 minutes away from your airport, right? And to do this, you're also going to need to be an Uber Gold driver. That is not that hard to become. Um, so don't act like it's the end of the world if you can't, if you're not gold yet. Just go get gold. It's really not that hard. And it is a very, very great pro reward to have. So you want to be about 20 or 30 minutes away from the airport after that first ride. If you're not, it's still fine. Um, and you should still do it the same way, but that's what you want. So you want your first ride. This is, and here, this is easy for me to do because I live about 30 minutes from my airport, yet that zone still gets really close to me. So I can be in that zone, give, get that first ride and then be 20, 30 minutes away. Cause a lot of times, um, by the area I pick, it's like a five minute ride, which is what I want. I don't want to get a long ride on the first one. From there, I set a destination to the airport. Now, this is the part that sometimes takes a little bit of waiting, but for my area, usually not more than 10 minutes. I usually get an airport ride. So now what have I made so far? I've made anywhere from five to 10 bucks on that sh first short ride, um, give or take tip. Now on the airport ride, I'm about to make about $20 on. One thing about airport rides is they have, I would say, I don't have data for this, but in my experience, very good chances of getting tipped if you're a good driver, if you unload their baggage, if you're engaging, um, or if you just vibed it out and you knew they didn't want to talk. A lot of times they tip you for that too. So now you've made 20 on the airport ride. You've made five to 10 on the regular ride. And if you're Uber gold, you're going to get an airport ride out. Now this is the, this ride is really what determines how much you make. So Let's add it up. We're already at, at, we'll say 25 to 30, and let's say it's a $12 consecutive trip bonus. I'm now up to anywhere from 32 to $37, give or take tips and what that first ride length was. So now I, I, all I have to do is add in that third ride. And if it was a pretty good airport ride, let's say it was at least $10, I'm already at 42 to $47. You seeing that? So now hypothetically you would need three good rides and you guys are saying, well, how possible is that? Well, let's even say that your first ride was $5 and let's say the destination trip to the airport was only 15. You're at 20 and let's say your third ride out is only five to 10 as well. Now you're at 25 to 30. And even if no one tipped, which you should get tipped on one of those, you're then applying that $12 consecutive trip and you're already at a really high hourly per hour earning. I loved doing this on weekdays where there would be a good consecutive trip bonus, but not, um, dang, what was I going to say there? But not, I guess just not the best day to drive. So like, let's say it's a random Tuesday and they've got a consecutive trip bonus going at a random time in the day. I loved doing it on those days because those are days where it's harder to get guaranteed earnings. So if I could even start my day and I'd already made a quick 50 bucks, for one, I'm already satisfied. I'm thinking, hey, at the worst, I made 50 bucks. But for two, then I'm going into the next few hours of the day already excited, already knowing I made good money. So that's the, wow, I took a long time explaining that one. That one takes a long time to explain. The next one is a lot simpler, and this is like the real money maker. So on your weekend surges, um, the best way, this is again, utilizing destination trips. I guess you don't really have to for this. You definitely need Uber Gold rewards though. But what I would do is Friday, Saturday night, 1.45 in the morning, I'm going to, I'm gonna go drive within like, three minutes of an area that I know is bound to have a really big bar rush surge. Um, so for me, there's, there's parts in Scottsdale where it's like every weekend there's something really solid. This dude is like staring me down right now and I feel incredibly awkward. Get in your car, son. Um, so what I would do is then as soon as it's like two to two Oh five, I've got the app off, but I'm waiting like literally two, three minutes outside of it. I drive into the middle of it. Now you could either set a destination into the middle of it and then change your destination. If you, and you can do that if you have both destinations left at the end of your day and you're going to be done after this, but you don't really need to even do that. You just drive to the middle 
And then what I would do is I would either set a destination then for a place super far away, like a 45 minute drive in the exact opposite direction of like where most people would be going. Or I would just sit there and I'd cancel rides until I got one that looked really good. So what do you want? Well, if you're sitting on a $10 surge or plus, you want to get a long distance ride because that's when you get that real good multiplier. So I would just cancel rides. And then with my Uber gold rewards, they would tell me where the ride's going. As soon as I saw something that said like 30 miles, bam, accept it, give the ride. A lot of times it'd be 50 to 80 bucks just on that one. And if you're in a, if you're having a really good night, a lot of times you can pull it off two, three times in a span of three or four hours. That's tough, but it's doable. And I've done it before. I've done this and I've made $150 in two hours. I've made $80 in two hours. I've made $95 in three hours. Um, all at the very least $40 an hour, usually a lot higher. Uh, it's, it's a great trick if you can bust out the weekends because you can go work for four hours starting at like 10 AM and just get to that 2 AM mark. And, um, I mean, you can make it an unthinkable amount of money in like four and a half, five hours. So that's what I got for you guys. That is from what I understand, the only legitimate ways to make $50 an hour. Some of you guys might have some tricks out there as well, but these are things that I've actually done. This is not a theory. I have done both of these things numerous times and they've made my night numerous times. So hope it works for you guys. Check it out and uh, be sure to like, and subscribe to the channel and I will see you guys soon.